2008, we realized that we wanted to do ministry with the neighborhood, not just in the neighborhood. We disciples see ourselves as a movement for the wholeness in the world. A big part of that is longing for wholeness right outside our doors. Now we don't just do our thing, but we work with neighborhood associations, churches, and other groups in our area. Well, I think it was in about 2010 when our Wednesday night dinners and programs stopped being so much church events, uh, but they started being more neighborhood events. We would invite in our neighbors, uh, we would sit down with them, we would eat with them, we would talk about the things that were important to us, the issues that were affecting the neighborhood, our city, our country, and, uh, and even the world. And it was just amazing to see the, uh, the number of people that were hungry, after work on a Wednesday night, not just for food, but uh, for a new kind of community. Each of our worship services is unique. Most of us were kind of surprised when we started listening to each other and to our neighbors about what was important to us in worship. We found that our learning styles and our tastes really played a part in what we perceived to be good worship. We gather between our services and what we do is we share cups of coffee and we talk and we get caught up on each other. It's a great time of fellowship. And we knew when we hired Jamie as our associate minister, what kind of person we needed to start that evening worship service on Sunday evenings. Our building and grounds are a place where the community is really built and strengthened. Uh, the children love to spend time out in the playground. The neighbors love the park and the surrounding grounds around the church. You know, it's funny, it used to be that just budgeting for a coat of paint for the church used to trigger this huge debate about whether or not we should be spending money for ourselves uh, rather than spending it out in the community. But I think that these days you'd be hard pressed to find anybody that would argue that spending money on these grounds, this building, is not a part of the community and the resources, the ministry that we need to be providing. I mean, this building, uh, these grounds, this green space, this is community ministry. Well, the ministry co-op building out back is new with offices and meeting rooms, and we also house three other nonprofit organizations. Those rooms are practically used 24-7, and we use those at the church to get together with neighborhood associations and schools and other churches. And we get together and discuss possible new ministry initiatives, such as a bus ministry, uh, food drives, um, walks for different causes and events that the neighborhood can get involved together such as clothing drives. A part of the building that used to be the youth wing now houses a mission center with bunks for about 30 people, showers, a kitchen, and a living area. We use it for our room and the in guests and we have a program called Mission Trip to Nashville and people from all over the world come. And just last week, we had a group of disciples from Honduras that came and used our facilities. Pull up the sleeve, collect the change and make it add up. Bring back everything you need. When people in, in the Nashville community just hear or see the Vine Street Chalice, or hear the word Vine Street, they're able to quote our tagline, or even name one of our community projects, at least one. We don't wait for them to walk in. We get the word out and not just the word. It took us a while to figure out where to spend our communication dollars. And we realized that in order to have good outreach, we needed to have good communication. And that was just the beginning. We do a communication audit every two years in order to assess the needs and wants of the community. We have two websites one for internal use and the other for external use. People pick up a lot of information as they walk through our welcome area. 
and they love watching the short reports about our community. Our leadership training program has been in place for a few years now and it's so good that other churches are always calling us to find out how we did it. And we tell them that it's not an accident, it was very intentional. We very carefully build in leadership training to all of our programs, including annual retreats, elders meetings, board meetings, deacon meetings, even when committees get together. They always have at least 15 minutes of skills building and leadership training. Because we want, when we ask people to lead, we want them to have the tools they need so they feel prepared to do the best job that they can. Over the last 10 years, we've had a lot of great additions to the programs here at Vine Street in education, but I think the one that's had the biggest impact uh, has to be FACE, which is the Forum for Adult Christian Education, uh, which we like to refer to as the liberation of Christian education from the grips of Sunday school. We've got about 40 different classes now, uh, ranging anywhere from three weeks to 18 months. Uh, some of the shorter ones we'll have three times a year. Uh, most of them are really more like once or twice. And they do recur each year, uh, but we also do have ad hoc sessions where we'll take some kind of current event and apply it to how uh, it relates to the gospel today. Uh, for example, we just started a four-week course on Wednesday nights about uh, the addition of uh, light rails into West Nashville. Uh, it's kind of an interesting discussion that kind of focuses on um, creation stewardship and how we can give people uh, that don't have driving ability access to the city. We're very good about setting goals around here and holding each other to make ourselves accountable for those goals. We find that celebration is one of the most important things here at Vine Street. And one of the top things on any agenda in any of our meetings is celebration. We take the time to set our goals, to work together, to support each other to make those goals, and then we turn the spotlight on ourselves and we celebrate. All of my powers, day after day, I can tell Every member embraces the mission of the church and every aspect of its ministries. In fact, I don't know one member that doesn't participate in at least one small group. Now, some of the groups only meet for a week, some may meet for a month, while others meet for years. The small groups are important as they build relationships across the congregation and they strengthen our ties of mutual care. Well, I'm not really sure what Jamie's job description is. I do know that worship, leadership, and communication is part of it. However, I do know that Jamie spends a lot of time coordinating these groups and getting them started. In 2009, we decided it was time to live into the future instead of the past. But for you who fear my name. Now is the time. Now is the time. Not tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Not some more convenient season. It is today that our best work can be done. It is today that our best work can be done. It is today that our best work can be done. Skip about like calves. It is today that we fit ourselves for the greater usefulness for the greater usefulness of tomorrow of tomorrow of tomorrow. Of tomorrow.